everybody. Welcome to the Munchkin Minute, your twice monthly look into some tabletop gaming news and more. I'm your host, Dan Dan, the Board Game Man, and this is your news for early September 2024. So starting off today, I've got a few duel games. Uh, I just love these things like Seven Wonders Duel, Caverna, Cave vs. Cave, which is another duel game. There's one out there for Agricola. Uh, and the designers are really able to, of these type of games, are really able to find that sweet spot of two-player accessibility and 1v1. And it's not really anything new. There's been a lot of these type games. Uh, the DC deck building game has a really cool duel type two-player game. Uh, and there's also, there was a Pillars of the Earth duel. Uh, it's like the Builder's Duel or whatever. So there's a lot of these games for years and years now, and they're just a really fun way to play two-player games in these types. So like I said, Seven Wonders Duel is probably the one that everybody may have known about. Uh, there's also a Great Splendor Duel that's amazing to play as well. So now... Yellow is going to be releasing King of Tokyo Duel. This will be out in early October. Pretty much everything today that I mentioned is going to say early October. So get ready for it. Uh, this will be out in early October. It'll be about $25. And like most duel games, it's going to be that tug of war style. Uh, and like all King of Tokyo games, it's going to be kind of monster on monster, a dice chucking, just fun one-on-one uh, -on -one fest with power-ups and monster fighting and such. So there's a couple of really good videos. Eric Martin and Man vs. Meeple both put up some really cool videos for you to check out as well on the BGG page. You can find that on there. But this looks like a really fun one uh, and I can't wait to check out. And right on cue, kind of like I said, dual games and right up the same alley and pretty much being coming out on that same day, Asmodee is going to be releasing Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle-Earth. Again, this will be early October and about $35. And this is very much the Seven Wonders Duel. So it's been reskinned and kind of expanded a bit. Uh, but if you know how to play Seven Wonders Duel, this will kind of get you right into this kind of gameplay with kind of the way they're drafting the cards and then uncovering other cards. So uh, there's a lot more going on in this one, and it looks like it on a table and there's a lot more things on a table for it. But if you like Seven Wonders Duel and you like Lord of the Rings, you'll absolutely dig this edition of the game. I've seen some videos and it looks amazing on a table as well. That presence is great just because of the way, you know, it's got the map and, uh, and, and again, the gameplay play is quick and fun uh, with a little bit more depth to it than some of these other ones, you know, looking at about 30 to 45 minutes for this particular one, but it has that kind of medium weight uh, of that as well. Uh, but you would expect some, you know, fun gameplay, especially with this uh, theme. So if you like, again, if you like Seven Wonders and you like Lord of the Rings, uh, I can't recommend this one enough there. So one of my big to buy games that was for Gen Con this year is officially getting a retail release date. So Restoration Games is going to be releasing Crossbows and Catapults Fortress War. This one, again, early October. So it'll be about $90 because there's a lot of stuff in this box and this is the whole set that you're going to want to get. So whether you're a kid from the 80s like me or you just have fond memories of playing this one in your playroom or anywhere on the table or if you're just new to the genre or you're younger uh, than us old people uh, and you just like the idea of just chucking things across, you know, flying discs and, and throwing things across and knocking other people's uh, fortresses down, uh, this is going to scratch that itch for sure. So uh, this looks really good. Uh, again, it's about $90. It plays in about 30 minutes to an hour. I mean, you can play these real quick skirmishes in there. Uh, in about, again, very, very lightweight for this sort of thing. And there'll be, there's a lot of other things that go along this uh, with this kind of set. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be releasing a lot more in the future. So this one looks great. That's Crossbows and Catapults, Fortress War. A couple of later this year slash Essen releases from Cranio Creations. Uh, first up, so a few years ago, Dennis Chan put out a really cool game all about tech trees. It basically was like, I call it Tech Tree of the Game. And that was Beyond the Sun. That was a solid game. Uh, I believe you can also play it on BGA. I can't remember if it's on Yukata or just BGA. Anyway, I really love the idea and I just wanted a little bit more out of the game. It is a fun game, but I just wanted a little bit more out of that game. But now Cranio Creations is putting out Beyond the Horizon, which is basically the sequel to Beyond the Sun. And this will be released at Essen this year uh, and then US a little bit right after that. I think it's about $60. This one is designed by uh, Matt Riddle, Ben Pinchback, and Adam Hill. Uh, I like to call them the Fleeples or basically they are Motor City Gameworks uh, and Dennis Chan as well helping out there. So this is taking the system and the tech trees from Beyond the Sun and putting it into a Civ type style game. So basically turning this kind of basically tech tree of the game into an actual Civ type game 
uh, with that game underneath it. So it's something I really had wanted a little bit more out of from Beyond the Sun. And, uh, you know, and it looks great. I did some work kind of proofreading and editing that rule book uh, for them. I guess more proofreading and help me send them some help out. Uh, so I did get to see the full rule book and the game looks absolutely amazing. Uh, and I can't wait to check this one out. I'm obviously a biased because those guys are real close friends of mine, uh, but they are real good designers and the game does look absolutely amazing. And of course, Civ style game with some tech trees. Guys, you gotta love that sort of thing. So it looks great. Uh, also from Cranio and also at Essen, uh, they're gonna be releasing a game called Golden Cup. This will be out again, Essen in about October. It should be about $40. This is designed by Gabriel Bubula and Simone Luciani. I love almost everything that Simone Luciani puts out. This one here will be about a one hour wonder, be about 60 minutes, kind of a lighter weight. It's kind of has a little bit of a fantasy theme with some sports elements to it, but a little bit lighter game. But it does have some dice drafting uh, or some dice chucking. And you're basically going against each other uh, to try and win the legendary gold cup. And it's going to be playing over a series of six rounds, which you kind of, I guess you'll be playing kind of mini games in a way. And uh, you're going to have a couple of teams of, of crew. Critters, uh, and as you kind of use the dice and use your abilities and getting more people on your team, you'll be getting points. Uh, so then at the end of the sixth round, whoever has the most uh, fame points uh, will face off in a finale. So you kind of have some, I guess it's kind of some pool deck, pool building, uh, some dice rolling uh, and some drafting there as well. So it looks good. Very lighter than than some of the other things that Crano puts out, which is great to have a little bit some of that. You know, you want to get some light with your heavy, but it does look like it has some pretty cool strategy as well. So next up, so ever since, uh, you know, Wards of Waterdeep, I think we've been trying to find that that kind of uh, Euro game to put into the D&D universe. So WizKids this week, they teased Builders of Baldur's Gate, and that's going to be released June of next year. So I think we're already talking about kind of Origins releases. And as we kind of get a little bit more information, I may put it out here, but basically we've got the information that we need here. So it's out in June at about $65. But again, this is by uh, Matthew Dunstan. So it's going to be, uh, more Euro in, in feel to it. But Matthew Dunstan is great at that type of game. He did Elysium, uh, Guild of Merchant Explorers, uh, Next Station in London, and that underrated gem that I absolutely love, Scorpius Freighter from AEG. Uh, probably nobody's ever heard of that. And that's a problem because it's a really, really fun Euro game, uh, kind of tableau building Euro game. Really cool with some Rondells as well. Anyway, so this particular one, Dungeons and Dragons, Builders of Baldur's Gate, you got two to five players, about an hour and a half. Again, got that Euro feel to it. Uh, it says, as you're placing buildings, you will pay, place your influence cubes to indicate your control in the buildings. And you're also going to have special keeps, gates, and watchtowers represented by building miniatures with slots in your influence cubes, allowing you to see the city grow as you're playing the game. You're going to have different things that are going to happen where uh, other factions will be attacking the city. And then you're going to have to defend it yourself and how much you put into this defense as well is going to be a thing. So it looks really good. Again, maybe as they get a little bit more information and some gameplay out there, I'll mention it. But uh, this is just exactly what I love. Again, Matthew Dunstan is a great designer. Uh, and that theme of kind of Baldur's Gate is right up my alley. And again, I just absolutely love the idea of Lords of Waterdeep. So this kind of taking it in another direction and more Euro with it uh, is really yeah, mm, awesome sorts of goodness, all sorts of Euro goodness in that D&D land. So uh, I'm going to stick with Matthew Dunstan here, uh, this time with his often designed partner, Brett Gilbert. So Dunstan and Gilbert here uh, with Asmodee is going to be releasing their Tree Society. That's going to be the next move in print. Uh, and next move is kind of who does Azul. So you're thinking about more abstract strategy games. And this one is no different. So this is going to be out uh, probably maybe as soon as you hear this, it might be out. This is about $35. This is going to be all about building tree houses. Uh, it looks kind of a fun, puzzly game about building tree houses. A little bit more abstract again. So there's not uh, a lot, you know, kind of using your brain and using the abstract way to build these tree houses uh, with some card play. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, and I'll, but on a quick tangent here, uh, if you want a game that's light and fun family style uh, with kids as well, uh, and you're thinking about, you know, with this same theme of tree houses, Best Treehouse Ever is a great card tableau building game about building tree houses. Uh, and it's just a lot of fun and a lot, very quick and easy. Again, it's more of a kind of a family kids game, but it is a lot of fun. It should still be, should be some copies out there should still be in print. And finally, in the news, a uh, quick note that Lurkana just keeps on trucking. So their next set, Ravensburger has announced, is the next Lurkana set will be out in November this year. It's called Azurite C. I'll put a link to kind of the, 
uh, lore kind of site for it. But now uh, it says for the first time, you can add characters from Big Hero 6 and Rescue Rangers to your trusty crew. It's a good thing they're in your boat as they help you stave off others traversing the waves like coconut clad pirates, wily swashbucklers, and even rival inventors with their accompanying robots. So check that one out. Of course, there'll be all sorts of things that the you know friendly local game stores will have out and also in Target and such. Uh, we'll have the packs and the different sets, probably even some new, obviously some new uh, starter sets or, or to, to get into their starter boxes, which are always fun and good, nice balanced uh, sets as well. Let's on head on over to digital now. So Demon Loop has gone into early access. This one is $12.99 on Steam. Now, this is a card-based roguelite uh, that's designed by Alexander Pfister, who you might remember is one of my favorite board game designers. He did things like Maracaibo, America, uh, Pirates of Maracaibo as well, Boon Lake, Great Western Trail, and some other great games. He's such a great designer. Uh, and now, this was just earlier, I I tried it out from what was just a demo state. And, um, and I got to say, I didn't really care for uh, what the demo had, to be honest. Uh, but I did talk to them, gave them my feedback, and they gave me a code for this early access. And I got to say, they've made a bunch of quality of life improvements and made the early on tutorial much, much better uh, and much more streamlined and easier to grasp. It is still in that early access state. There are a few things that I actually sent back to them, uh, some ideas for them that may help, uh, you know, more quality of life changes. But man, it has gone a lot, lot better. And I really dig this uh, this one. So that is Demon Loop. Uh, I'll have a code for the digital release as far as the EA goes uh, to give away. So just head on over to Major Spoilers Discord, uh, go to the Munchkin Land channel and let me know what your favorite Fister games are. Uh, and if you played the demo or any thoughts on the early Demon Loop, and I'm going to go ahead and pick a random winner for that and give you a code for the new Demon Loop uh, to give just to give away a, a copy of it as well. Uh, also coming soon to Steam, I don't have a whole lot of information on this one, uh, but Steam and iOS, they just announced it this week. Portal Games is going to be releasing Imperial Miners. I'll have a link to the Steam on there. I think the iOS, if you go to their site, I saw Ignacy put up on Facebook where if you go to the iOS link uh, on Facebook, so you may want to look for Portal Games on Facebook. I think they may have some free copies of this for the iOS going out there. Uh, some of the early access kind of uh, in their test, their demo copies as well to check out. So look for that one. But I absolutely love Imperial Miners. Very, very chill, lightweight game where it's basically just kind of a drafting game. You're going into the earth, you're you're mining into the earth, and then as you're placing a card, you will then trigger cards that were placed above it as you come out of the mine as well. So really cool there. Uh, so let's head on over to crowdfunding. Now, there's not a whole lot right now on Kickstarter, but if you want files to print out Dice Tower or Sexy Miniatures uh, or a whole bunch of RPGs, there's a bunch of that stuff out there right now. But I've only got three that I want to mention from Kickstarter right now. First one is Raw, Pharaoh Edition, that reprint and more. This one is from 25th Century Games. I absolutely love uh, Chad and the rest of the crew over there at 25th Century Games. They put out a lot of a lot of cool stuff. I have an older copy of Raw, so I don't get the newer one, but it looks amazing on a table. I've seen uh, some other people playing it, and it looks great on a table. Uh, and it's not very expensive at all. Uh, you can get uh, the standard edition, the, basically the new standard edition for $40 in this Kickstarter. They've got this new Pharaoh edition, which has, I believe it has some acrylic uh, and some metal. It's a, well, it says deluxe wooden and metal edition of Raw. So they've also got a deluxe acrylic edition of Raw in there with Trader's Expansion, which is also part of this Kickstarter. All that's in this box. That's 100. The uh, regular Pharaoh edition is for 90. They've also got the standard edition, like I said, for 40. They've got a Raw and Write, which is also basically a flip and write for Raw for $25. And there's another game called Ratsia that is all part of this. This has got about another about a week to go as of this recording. I'm sure you'll be able to get on this one late if you happen to get this one. Uh, if you see this one later, once it's expired, you almost always get into uh, the, you know, after it. Uh, but anyway, Ra is a fun game. It's an uh, older game. A lot of fun about kind of has some push your luck, some set collection to it, and a cool little auction mechanic uh, that I really dig that was kind of ahead of its time once it did come out. And that is Ra. So next up, March of the Ants, the ultimate ant civilization game. This one is by Tim Eisner. Now, I uh, I, I kind of didn't get this one the first time. I don't even remember seeing it. This happens with so many games come out. And even I can't follow all these games that have come out. But this one looks really cool the way kind of the... Uh, kind of the worker placement, kind of moving around a map. It's kind of like a 4X uh, worker, kind of a 4X ant game about moving, you know, an ant civilization game, which is really cool. Uh, this one's got plenty of time, over three weeks left to go. And it's got the Evolved Edition, which is a little bit nice, kind of like a, uh, a deluxe edition there for $65 and a regular standard edition for $49. This one looks cool. I love Civ games. I like when Civ games do interesting things and having a Civ game based around ants. 
is very, very cool as well. So well, well funded. Uh, and you've got plenty of time to get in on this one. And finally, from the Kickstarter side, the DC deck building game, Arkham Asylum. This has got about three and a half weeks to go. This one is from Cryptozoic. You can get in this one for about $90 to get the Welcome to Arkham Edition. Then there's the Expand Your Mind, which has got a whole bunch of more stuff in there for $135. Uh, I got to say, I've always kind of mentioned that DC deck building game was probably one of my favorite deck building games out there. Just the way the system works. There's basically just one currency and go and you're fighting against kind of the big bads. You know, there's a stack of villains. This one being Arkham Asylum, you're going to be playing as villains. Uh, this is kind of its standalone expansion. All the stuff for DC deck building game can be put together. So in this kind of set, you'll be getting the uh, crossover pack, Dark Knights Rising, and you'll get the Arkham Asylum pack. Uh, man, it looks great. Uh, I got to say, uh, again, I can't send this, uh, say this enough. This is one of my favorite deck building games, and I've always loved deck building games. Uh, and of course, I'm a big DC. I'm a DC zombie, so I love all things DC. And this is well, well funded. I had about three and a half weeks to go. We'll head on over to GameFound real quick. So we've got three here. The first one we've got is Puerto Rico Special Edition. Now, Puerto Rico has been around forever. A great game. I think it was even number one on BGG for years and years. Uh, but this is kind of, it helped usher in kind of with Catan. Puerto Rico helped usher in kind of the new way of playing hobby board games. This is kind of a deluxe special edition. Kind of reminds me of Castles of Burgundy when they put that special edition out. So now you've got this Puerto Rico with the special edition. Uh, it is about $146. So it is pricey. But of course, like I said, it's a special edition. So it is quite the pimped out edition with some kind of quality of life improvements. And just like uh, Castles of Burgundy, there's basically an expansion in here. There's a solo mode in here and some quality of life improvements. Uh, in solo mode, you're speaking my language right there. Uh, this is at $1.8 million or so and about three weeks to go. So you've got plenty of time to get on this one. And you know there's going to be plenty of stretch goals. And uh, if I, from what I've seen of that uh, Castles of Burgundy edition, if you like the base game, like Castle of Burgundy, you'll love that deluxe edition. So if you like Puerto Rico, you're absolutely going to love everything they've done to Puerto Rico, this new special edition. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077, the board game. Now, this one is also way, way funded. Four million dollars on there on GameFound. Uh, plenty of stuff unlocked there. And you get in this one for about $139. Now, I had on the last Geek All Stars, we had David Waybright on, and he was talking about playing this game and getting an early, just kind of seeing, you know, early play of the game. It's a co-op game and it has some real-time elements to it, but not the whole game is not real time to it. Uh, so it kind of, a lot of times there's an I, whenever there's an IP game, I'm always a little skeptical, but it looks like they've done a pretty good job for this one uh, by Go On Board. It looks like this game does have some really cool elements to it. Uh, the minis look good. The gameplay seems pretty interesting. And there's a whole bunch of crap in that box. So if you do like those sprawling games, uh, co-op type games, uh, I think this one might be for you. So definitely check it out. Watch the video. Maybe even watch some other videos of gameplay and see if it's something you like. I know that real time stuff is not everybody's cup of tea, but it might be something that you like. And finally, something that is a huge cup of tea of mine from, again, when I talk about like things from my childhood from the early 90s, Heroes of Might and Magic was the game that I absolutely loved on the PC forever and ever. This is Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game, Stronghold, Conflux, and Cove expansions. So you can get back in. This is going to be launching in a, uh, a couple of days from this recording. Uh, and I believe it's going to be a little pricey. And, you know, I know it's like in 130, but there's a lot of stuff in this box. Uh, I didn't get in on it the first time it comes out. I may get on this because there's so much stuff in this box. And I've heard a lot of really good things about it. And again, Heroes of Might and Magic is just something that is just so near and dear to my heart. There's minis in there. It's a really cool kind of almost 4X or dungeon crawl kind of combination of gameplay to it. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, I think I might be backing this as I'm talking to you right now. So uh, check that one out. Here's a My Magic 3 with expansions. It looks absolutely amazing. Uh, so thanks for joining me today. If you see any news you think I'd like to feature, shoot me a message at Geek Jock Dan on Twitter. And of course, on the Major Spoilers Discord, where I love to chat all about board games. Also, please check out Majorspoilers.com for great content by Steve and the rest of the Major Spoilers crew. And also check out the Geek All-Stars podcast. This week, I'm going to be recording with Justin Jacobson, uh, from Restoration Games, we'll be talking about the upcoming, they've got a up, new upcoming set, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set uh, that will be coming out for Unmatched that we'll be talking a lot about. And we'll be talking a little bit about Frosthaven and such because we're both guest designers on Frosthaven. Uh, we did some scenarios, so we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. As always, I'm Dan Dan, Board Game, and we'll see everyone in a couple weeks for another Munchkin Minute. This podcast is copyright 2024 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.